Hey there, Internet. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of blood! <laughs> yes, we're returning once again to the Underworld franchise. And we don't even have a Patreon request for it. Because I admit that I got a little bit curious as to how the story continues. And if this series improves any. Well, let's see how we get on with the third in the series, Rise of the Lycans. Released in 2009, Rise of the Lycans is a prequel that tells the tale of Lucian, the first Lycan to assume human form, and his struggle to escape the grip of mad vampire noble Victor. Lucian was raised in the vampire's castle, and even fell in love with his daughter, but there can be no such union under the eyes of Victor. Receiving again mixed reviews, can this be the one to finally break the curse and make its way into my house of love? There's only one way to find out! So grab your silver stakes and come with me down to the Middle Ages to witness for ourselves... The Rise of the Lycans. I present you Lucian, first of the Lycans. What sets our protagonist apart from his first clan forebears is his humanity, in that he's able to take both wolf and human forms, and Sonya, Victor's daughter. Lucian despairs at the treatment of his people. Victor sicked Lucian's wolf form on human captives that they may too become lichen. And why? Victor imagined a completely servile yet immortal slave race that may protect their masters in the light of day and be the perfect slave labourers by night. <laughs> Conceited vampires, thinking they're strong enough to kill off every last lichen if they rebel. And we already know what it leads to, because we've seen it in the other two Underworld movies. But someone saw Sonya leave Lucian's hut? Yes, Lucian and Sonya are lovers. Their blossoming romance happened entirely off-screen. Lucian begins to feel things, and rides to his lover's side. And as the first clan muster, Lucian removes his collar and goes wolf which goes about as well as you'd expect. Now, while the idea was sound in execution, the consequences were always going to happen, because neither of them were supposed to be out in the woods in the first place. But Sonya rode out to protect incoming nobles, and Lucian rode out to protect an outnumbered Sonya. Which proves, once again, that a good deed is its own punishment. But putting Lucian with his kin is not a good idea. Which is why Sonya bargains for her lover's freedom. Remember Tanis the Scroll Keeper from Underworld Evolution? Well, at this time, he's the Eastern Coven Scroll Keeper. He's kept the secret of Lucian and Sonya's love, but only because he can't yet leverage it for anything. Until Sonya goes to him with the promise of trading her seat on the council for his silence, and one last meeting with her love. But Victor plans to make an example of Lucian the following night which spurs Lucian to organise an escape at dawn. And while escape isn't easy, a determined Lucian pushes through. But oh dear, the truth is a bitter draught indeed. And as always with the Underworld franchise, we must remember that memories are stored in the blood. But Lucian is a fool for love, and blunders straight into Victor's trap. Our lovers fight their way to the courtyard, but oh dear. For the sake of your grandchild. This is precisely the wrong thing to say to your racist, pure-blood obsessed father when said grandchild is a hybrid vampire lichen and the father just broke back into Victor's castle to free you. Oh, gentle viewer. Do you get the feeling that these characters make decisions so that the story lines up with what we already know? And so we arrive at the scenes witnessed in flashback back in Underworld 1. Sonya's murder doesn't sit well with Lucian, and the Lycan Rebellion descend on the castle. None of which sits well with Victor, who won't be denied. Long story short, they fight, Lucian wins, by stabbing Victor in the mouth. Oh! 
That's not how you're supposed to do the sword swallowing trick. And while this is where our movie ends, the story of the secret war between vampires and lichens has only just begun. And that story is told in the other Underworld movies. Thus then, I present you Underworld, Rise of the Lycans. The first of the Underworld series to actually make it into my house of love. At last, an Underworld movie where we can actually see what goes on. And where we actually care about the characters. More so than before anyway. Director Patrick Totopoulos has actually gotten performances out of his cast. Or maybe because the lore has been pushed to the background, an actual story can be told. And let's talk about those performances, as they are so much better than you'd expect, given the material and the preceding movies. Michael Sheen imbues his Lucian, who makes the cardinal sin of getting too close to the boss's daughter, with actual emotion. We feel for this first of the Lycans, who only wanted to see his kin treated with an ounce of decency. And in contrast, Bill Nye's officious and disgusted victor. Every inch the magical racist, if you will. Not to mention Rona Mitra's Sonia, the movie's stand-in for series protagonist Celine. She too does her best with the material, but is restrained by her noblewoman status. Surprisingly, this movie flows pretty well. Event follows event, the time frame is pretty clear, and the resolution is satisfying. One thing that could have been improved though, is that the romance between blacksmith Lucian and noblewoman Sonia is completely skipped over, and they're already deeply intertwined when we join the main part of the story. I would have liked to see this romance blossom a little, if only to find out how they managed to get away with it for so very long. And this being an action movie, we have to mention the action. And the movie doesn't disappoint there either. Then again, neither did the other two. The difference here though, is that you have the context, and enough connection with the characters that you genuinely care. It's not just Werewolf A beating up Vampire B, it's a cruel, pure-blood obsessed Victor getting consequence from Freeman Lycan Lucian. What I'm really trying to say here, is that this movie doesn't have such a weight of lore dragging it down, which gives it a chance to actually BE a movie, instead of a collection of narrative points. If this was the first movie released, maybe the rest of the series would have kept me more invested, Still, if you only watch one Underworld movie, make it this one. It's still gory and blood soaked, but if I denied every movie with so much as a drop, then the House of Love would be empty indeed. Three down, two to go. And we may get to them sooner than you think. But for today, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks! Hey folks, Funky again. If you liked the video, you know where that button is. Or why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!